Hello everybody, uh, today we're going to look at uh, chair work and particularly with reference to the research of uh, Sofia Osimo from Barcelona done some interesting things involving avatars actually where avatars are sort of uh, representations of Freud's body and the patient's body and so forth but I thought it would be interesting to apply that to uh, chair work and see how far we get so the first thing to know about chair work is that uh, whenever a person gives themselves advice that tends to work out well. So whatever we can do to get someone to, to give themselves advice, that's good. So we're in one chair at the moment, so all you need for chair work is another chair, which, trust me, is over there. So let's try it out. Um, I'm going to be a patient, and I'm going to come out with a problem. And here we go. Well, I'm talking to my other self, who's a therapist. Uh, hello, well my problem is that um, uh, I wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning and I don't get back to sleep again. And then uh, uh, what happens, I'm just getting back to sleep at half past 6 and then I have to get up at quarter to 7 and so I'm really tired. Okay, so I've stated my problem and now I can go over there and give myself some advice. Okay, so I'm going to go over here. And when I'm over here, I'm still in, I'm still me, obviously, but um, I, I'm giving myself advice. So I say, well, huh, if I were you, if you wake up at four o'clock every morning, if I were you, I'd get up, and that will soon teach you uh, not to go waking up at four o'clock in the morning. You'll soon stop if you, if you make yourself get up every time you do that. Okay, well, that, that might or might not be good advice. I don't know. But it's, it's advice. It's, uh, and we know that if you can get a person to give themselves advice, it tends to work out well. But there are a couple of things that look as though they are extremely helpful. And I want to take you through both of those things at the moment. So I'm going to go back to that chair again. The first thing is, if you can get the person to record their problem. And it seems to be something about recording it that, I don't know this is for a start, they, they come out with a more um, elaborate version of the problem. And nowadays with iPhones and so on, it's incredibly easy to, to record. So I'm going to do the same scene again. And I haven't rehearsed this, but I'm just going to see what happens when I know it's all being recorded. So here we go. Yeah, well, my problem is that uh, I wake up at uh, four o'clock in the morning, and um, I don't get back to sleep again. Uh, what happens is I wake up around about four, you know, three, four, five, whatever it is. Uh, go to the bathroom, come back again, and uh, then I'm awake until about half past six, uh, and then it's time to get up at quarter to seven, and and that's it. So. Sometimes I make myself get up at four o'clock or five o'clock and uh, do whatever, hang about. Uh, other times I just lie in bed and sort of um, just get bored, really, listen to the radio and, and, and so forth until, until it's time to get up. So there we go, that's my problem. Okay, so the very act of recording it seems to be a helpful thing. So now I'm going to go over to my other chair. So I settle in this chair and I listen to the recording. Uh, now, there's another thing you can do though. It's good enough just listening to the recording because what happens is you go into a different frame of mind. You're actually listening to your problem and you're looking at it from a different point of view. Now what Osimo did was, it was very complex with 3D glasses and so on, but I don't see why we shouldn't do it just in chair work. What she said is, pretend you are Sigmund Freud. Now, amazing, and it's not that the, not that the patients knew who, anything about Sigmund Freud, they didn't know about psychoanalysis, so it wasn't as though they were giving, each other mar giving themselves marvellous advice. But it was much more effective when they were embodied as Sigmund Freud. 
And it is interesting to speculate why. I guess it's because they thought, well, you've got to be sort of thoughtful and probably compassionate as well. You can't be too harsh. I don't think Freud would be harsh, maybe. And you've got to be thoughtful. So I'm going to do both those things now. I'm going to settle in this chair, pretend I'm Sigmund Freud, believe it or not. And I'm also going to listen back to what the problem is. Okay, so let's see if I can play that. Yeah, well, my problem is that uh, I wake up at uh, four o'clock in the morning and um, I don't get back to sleep again. Uh, what happens is I wake up around about four, you know, three, four, five, whatever it is, uh, go to the bathroom, come back again, and uh, then I'm awake until about half past six, uh, and then it's time to get up at quarter to seven, and, and that's it. So sometimes I make myself get up at four o'clock or five o'clock and uh, do whatever, hang about. Uh, other times I just lie in bed and sort of um, just get bored, really, listen to the radio and, and, and so forth until until it's time to get up. So there we go, that's my problem. Okay, well that's... I mean, it was interesting being in just uh, being in sort of... Let me just stop that. Um, being in that sort of mode is interesting. Now the next thing that uh, we have to do is to respond to that problem and again we have to record the response. So uh, I've got no very great ideas but just having listened to that I'm going to come out with some kind of response still in the role of Sigmund Freud. Okay well um, there's several things strike me about that. You said sometimes you will get up at uh, four o'clock or whatever other times you won't. And I wondered whether there's any difference. Uh, you know, maybe it's the times you get up, maybe you have special things to do, you know, work to get on with or something like that. The other thing that struck me though was you said you'll get up and you'll hang around doing whatever. And that seemed like a pity to me. It seems to me that maybe if you're going to get up at four o'clock or five o'clock, which seems like a good idea if you're wide awake, then maybe you could, I don't know, um, uh, uh, make it almost have a project of you know, watching particular movies. Um, a friend of mine watched all the Oscar winning movies way back to 1920 something. It took him months and months and, well, I think it was years actually, but it took him ages. But that was his project to get hold of and watch. So maybe you could have some kind of project like that or watch some natural history movies and become, what, you know, whatever whatever you're into, maybe to, to do that, something useful at that time of morning. And I suppose the other thing that, uh, that uh, struck me was that, uh, and it's a great pity really, that it's like that, and I wonder what else you could do to have a nice night's sleep. Um, I think you said you get up to go to the bathroom. I wonder you know, whether that's possible to uh, either not, not, not drink so much maybe the, the night before, or maybe you know, gradually expand your bladder capacity by, you know, during the daytime by going to the by stretching out the time intervals between going to the loop. I don't know. I wonder if there's just some things like that uh, that could be done. Okay. So uh, it whether that is good advice for for uh, the person over there, who knows? But we do what we do know is that when people are kind of really feeling as though they are, Sigmund Freud specifically, they give better advice than when they're just being themselves uh, doing that. And the more we can get them to feel like that, that they are Sigmund Freud, um, uh, the, more, the more the effect is, is, is true. So I guess it is something to do with a compassionate response and, uh, and a sort of thoughtful response, something like that. But the final step is, I have to go over there and listen to basically my own advice. Okay, well, um, there's several things strike me about that. You said sometimes you will 
get up at uh, four o'clock or whatever, other times you won't. And I wondered whether there's any difference. Uh, you know, maybe uh, the times you get up, maybe you have special things to do, you know, work to get on with or something like that. The other thing that struck me, though, was you said, you'll get up and you'll hang around doing whatever. And that seemed like a pity to me. It seemed to me that maybe if you're going to get up at four o'clock or five o'clock, which seems like a good idea if you're wide awake, then maybe you could, I don't know, um, uh, uh, make it almost have a project of you know, watching particular movies. Um, a friend of mine watched all the Oscar-winning movies way back to 1920-something. took him months and months and, well, I think it's years, actually. But it took him ages. But that was his project, to get hold of and watch. I mean, so maybe you could have some kind of project like that or watch some natural history movies and become, you know, whatever whatever you're into, maybe to, to do that, something useful at that time of morning. And I suppose the other thing that, uh, that uh, struck me was that, uh, and it's a great pity really, that it's like that, and I wonder what else you could do to have a nice night's sleep. Um, I think you said you get up to go to the bathroom. I wonder you know, whether that's possible to uh, either not, not, not drink so much maybe the, the night before, or maybe you know, gradually expand your bladder capacity by you know, during the daytime by going to the by stretching out the time intervals between going to the loop. I don't know. I wonder if there's you know, some things like that uh, that could be done. Okay, so that is it. So first thing was that if you can get a person to give themselves advice that seems to be a good idea and I suppose it's because we're more likely to take advice that's come from ourselves because you know we trust ourselves and also it builds our own self-efficacy the idea that we are kind of capable of sorting out our own problems. Second thing though in terms of chair work you do get a different perspective if this is a chair where you've got the problem you simply present the problem over there and that's the chair when you're in that chair you kind of in problem solving mode, you're in constructive mode and saying it back. That seems to be, it just seems to be a good thing to have the two separate chairs. It separates out the two things. And the third thing is if you can record it and play it back, you, you do get a different frame of mind. You present the problem better and you kind of present the solution better too. And a very interesting thing from Osimo's research is that if you can really uh, almost imagine yourself really as Sigmund Freud specifically in her research but I suppose it could be lots of other people would probably work just as well but it was actually Sigmund Freud in her research um, uh, that has a, a, a real big added benefit which is fascinating I think anyway that's a sort of introduction to uh, chair work and I think it's terrific I think it's really good it's something that the patient can go off and do by themselves and they might say things quite differently uh, just when they're on their own compared to when they're with us, maybe. It's also something you can join in with, but that's, that's another story. Okay, hope that's useful.